Hello everyone, my name is Christian Lopez. If you haven't been to my channel before, welcome, and if you have, welcome back. I don't know what to do with my hands right now. Um, Alright, let's just get straight into this. So, today's video, as you can see on the title, Snap-on Torque Angle, or Tektronic, whatever you, I think it's Torque Angle, 3 8 uh, Snap-on Electric Torque Wrench. Is it worth it for the price, or is it better just to stay off with a standard click-style wrench? Maybe you are a person working in a professional shop where you're doing a lot of like R&Rs, um, just remove and replace at like a dealership, or maybe you're working at like a machine shop where you are working with engines and trans and taking things apart, putting them together, or even if you're an at-home mechanic. So I'm basically just going to go through the specifications of the torque wrenches themselves, as well as showing you uh, the sounds and clicks that they make once you reach your torque as angle. Uh, positives and negatives to both of them as well as prices so let's get straight into it now first off I'm going to be starting off with the click style wrench here now this is going to be the QD 2 R 1000 a with a starting price of three hundred and sixty seven dollars for this click style torque wrench so what we're going to talk about right now is the range as well as a few other specifications before we move on to the digital now it is made in USA as well as digital that's always a great thing um, and it has a range of 16 to 84 foot-pounds, so about 70 foot-pounds of range from the beginning to the end. Um, some of the other versions of the 3.8s go from 5 to 75, so a little bit lower on the upper end, but you do get more torque in the bottom end of that 5 foot-pounds. Now, it has uh, 4.5 degrees of turning to get in between teeth. Talking about the teeth, it is a 80 teeth head. Um, it does not take batteries because obviously it's a click style torque wrench. The head width itself is one inch and the length of the torque wrench is going to be 14 and a half inches and obviously it is a click style. Now that is the basic specifications of the, cap of the click style. Now we're going to talk about the digital style. After that we're going to compare the two as well as show them both in use. So as you can see right here we have the snap-on uh, digital torque wrench right here. Now, right off the bat, you can tell that this doesn't have the standard snap-on all metal. <laughs> it is covered in a plastic as well as a rubberized hand grip, which I actually feel is pretty nice. I do like this rubberized hand grip. It's super easy to hold on to, especially if, even if you have oil on your hands. Uh, it does have a good grip. Now, right here, the digital torque wrench, I'll give you the part number right now. A Tech, so A T E C H 2 F R 125 B. And it also shows it on the box itself as well as when it was calibrated, so January of 2017. So we have the wrench itself. Now it um, does have a torque range of 5 to 125 foot pounds. Now you might be telling yourself that is definitely a lot more than the click style, a lot more range. That is true, we'll get into that. Um, it is made in the United States of America, and so same as that one. It does have the exact same four and a half degrees of gear swing, although it might be because the age, or you know what, no, since this torque wrench is like 10 years older, it doesn't have 80 teeth. This one does have 80 teeth. That's the difference. I was going to say, that didn't feel like 80 teeth. That is because that wasn't the specifications I was going off of. So, 80 teeth, um, the width of the head is one inch and a quarter. It does take three AA batteries. So there we go. Unlike the click style, where you can just use it whenever you want to use it, this does take three AA batteries, which I have two Duracells and an Energizer right there. It's gonna beep when I put it in because it's getting power right there. Um, so it does take three AA batteries. Uh, it is 17.9 inches, so it's definitely much longer than the click style. Um, and then when you are torquing down, unlike the click style, once you hit your torque, makes a click, you're done. This does buzz, so it actually vibrates in your hands while you're using it. Lights will pop up. The digital screen will show where you, what foot pounds or inch pounds or whatever you are at, as well as it does have angle. So this is this torque wrench right here. Now, when I'm talking about um, you can change it, let me just show you right here. So when you turn on this snap-on torque wrench, let me actually get it off angle. So, nope. Okay, 25 foot-pounds. Maybe hard to see. Let me see if you guys can actually see that. Yeah, so 25 foot-pounds. 
If you want to ch change the unit, there's a U right here. So 25 foot-pounds is 300 inch-pounds. 300 inch-pounds is 33.9 newton meters. 33.9 newton meters is 346, I think that's kilogram centimeter. I don't know what that is. And then uh, DNM, which I don't know what that is either. So right there, you can switch units, which is a very nice thing to have, because if you're working on something and the book says, you know, 238 inch pounds, guess what? You can just click over inch pounds, go through it, instead of like the standard foot pounds click wrench, you're going, okay, so let's see that, gotta divide that by 12. Okay, that's the foot pounds, it's a little bit off, but we'll work with it. So this does change units, which is very nice. Also, the major, major, major plus into buying this is it does have torque angle. So unlike a click style wrench where you're going to need to use your uh, click style torque wrench as well as a angle gauge that you can then adapt, put on the torque wrench and then put your socket on to it, this includes torque angle, which is a very, very, very big plus. Um, but this is the torque wrench itself. I just went through the specifications. Let me take that, that one, put them together and we can do a side by side comparison as well as a few positives and negatives to both. Right here, we have the digital, we have the click style torque wrench. And as you can see, they look pretty similar, but at the same time, very different. Putting them up next to each other, you can tell that the head is larger on this torque wrench compared to this one. It's only a quarter of an inch difference, but you can see that there is a difference. As well as when you put them up next to each other, you can see that the digital is three and a quarter inches longer than the click style torque wrench. So um, first off, I am gonna talk about the positives of the click style and then the positives of the digital. That way you can really compare them together and see what's best for you. Whether you are an at-home user who's looking for a nice snap on torque wrench, you work at a dealership where you're doing mostly R&R &R removal and replacements, or you're working at a shop where you are doing engine work, transmission work, you're taking things apart, putting them back together, that type of stuff. So, digital wrench. One of the first positives that I'm gonna say right off the bat that everyone sees, which is the reason why you're watching this video. The click style torque wrench is $228 cheaper. That is a, a very large difference. I mean, that's more than half the price of the, the torque wrench itself. So this wrench is $367 compared to the digital, which actually I don't think I said before, is a whopping $600. Now, both these torque wrenches, I'm pretty sure you can get them while they're on sale. Maybe this for like 300 bucks, maybe 500 bucks, but still just right off the bat for a base, there is a $230 difference. So I'm gonna say a positive to this torque wrench is it's much cheaper. Another positive, um, which I already spoke of before, it's three and a quarter inches shorter. When you're working with the torque wrench, sometimes when you're working inside an engine bay or you're working in a tight spot, that three inches will keep you from using this torque wrench. It really will, because you might say, okay, I need, I need to get in there and I need to you know, torque this thing down, but the only way to get to it is at a certain position, and this three inches on top right here doesn't let you torque this thing down. That, that I say that is definitely a negative, is that it is so much longer. Um, also, this is a thinner torque wrench. Not only the head itself is thinner, but the overall body of the torque wrench is much thinner. You can see right here. I mean, there's at least a half inch of thickness that is more on this torque wrench compared to the click style. And when you're working in tight spots, trying to torque things down, this might get in your way because it is so much longer as well as thicker. And I know these words are gonna come out of context. It's gonna be horrible. Um, yeah, I would say a, definitely a big positive is it's shorter, it's thinner, it is, they actually feel about the same weight. They do. Um, I think it's because this is all metal. This does have plastic and batteries. They feel about the, a similar weight. This almost feels heavier, but I, I'm not 100% sure. One of my arms could just be stronger than the other. But yeah, $230 cheaper. It's a click style, so it's super easy to tell once you reach that torque. Makes that noise. Uh, it's a fourth thinner, three and a quarter inches shorter, and it doesn't need batteries. So once you're done with this, all you have to do is zero out your wrench, just like so. Put it in the box, put it away, and you're done. So you don't have to worry about having to put batteries in it, using it halfway through a installation, you're using the torque wrench and the battery dies. That's that. Um, but now moving on to the digital torque wrench itself. Now the positives of this torque wrench, 
it's digital, which is a great thing. It makes it very easy to see what your torque range is. So let's say you're setting to 25 foot pounds, you need to see how long it takes you to get there. You can actually watch the digital screen and they'll show you 16, 17, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25 foot pounds once you hit it. And it'll show it down to the decimal. So if you're going at 25 foot pounds, it'll show you if you hit 25.2 foot pounds, which is an awesome thing to see. Also, it does buzz and vibrate in your hand. So it can tell you once you're getting closer, it shows you on the lights, it'll show amber lights from, I believe it's gonna be orange, or no, red, or orange, yellow, green. So it'll show you, okay, like maybe you're working somewhere where you can't see that torque, but you're watching the side, you're feeling the vibrations, and you know once you hit it. Also, I would say a positive to this torque wrench itself is that you will know what torque you went over if you do. So let's say you're torquing at 25 foot pounds and you accidentally just cinch it too tight and you're going, oh, hopefully that'll be okay. Uh, compared to a click style, you're gonna click and you're gonna go past it and you don't know really where that bolt was torqued at. Compared to this, you will know, okay, I went to 25, but I accidentally went too far past it. Okay, it's showing me. I actually torqued it to 38 foot pounds. That would be hard to torque it that far past, but some people do that. And you will be able to know, okay, maybe that bolt stretched too much. I should remove it and replace it with another one. Or going, you know what, okay, that's within the range. I know I'm okay. We're good to go. Compared to a click style, you don't really know where that torque to unless you try to adjust it and find out and fine tune where you torque that to. This makes that very simple. Now, um, another thing that is a big uh, plus is, like I said, you can adjust the scales. It makes it very simple to go from inch pounds, foot pounds, newton meters. Or let's say you're working off of a book that is newton meters. So you're trying to do an installation, it says 28 newton meters, and you can go to 28 newton meters, click it in, and go, what's that foot pounds on it? You, 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 you have the foot pounds. So you go, okay, I know that was 20 foot pounds. So it makes it very easy to convert the scales from newton meter to inch, inch to newton meter to D, DNM or KG, CM, whatever that is. It makes it very simple. But I'm gonna say the largest plus to this torque wrench really is gonna be angle. The fact that it has angle built in makes this a very amazing torque wrench that you can utilize in your shop if you're working on motors, you're working on things where you need to be able to get that torque and angle at the same time. So you can take it up, do your, your torquing on your heads and go, okay, now it's telling me I need to, once I've done the two torques, I need to angle it 90 degrees. You turn it on, you click the top right button right here, which is an arrow, It'll say angle, you'll hold it stale. Once the gyros have zeroed, you then will go and it will go all the way to 90 degrees, hit the dot, you're perfect. That is an amazing thing to have. That way you're not having to, okay, I got it, now let me put this on, put in an additional tool that's gonna cost extra money to put on, then put your socket on, then do that and go through it. It makes it very simple because sometimes those angle slip-on tools that you use are, are kind of large, they're sometimes kind of big. And it makes it very simple that that is included with this torque wrench. Um, as well as the fact that, oh, another positive to this torque wrench. In the top right corner right here when you are working with something, the intake plenum on my car, there's 12 bolts, you're torquing to you and you go, crap, was I on five or six? And you go, okay, look, I've torqued it down six times, which means now I can go to the seventh. That is another cool feature that this torque wrench does have. So now that I've talked about the specifications as well as the positives and negatives to both, I'm going to be both, I'm gonna be using it on my car right now, showing you uh, once it reaches that torque, so you guys can see the actual digital scale, the noise, the vibration, all of that, as well as the click style. I'll also be showing you torque angle. Once that's done, I'll basically go over whether it is worth to spend $600 on a digital style wrench or a click style. But in the end of this video, the choice is really yours. I'm just trying to give you guys some good information on both the wrenches. That way you can make a good, informed decision on your next purchase because definitely a $600 torque wrench is a big purchase. So yeah, let's start off with the click style on the car, then I'll move over to the digital. Now I'm currently at my 350Z right here. This is the hinge to my hood and I do have this 12 millimeter bolt. So let's say I want to torque this to 20 foot pounds. You go through right here and you go all the way until you hit 20 foot pounds right there. Now, you're gonna go on the bolt itself. I'm gonna be quiet so you guys can hear the click of the wrench. Right there, that's how you know you've hit 20 foot pounds. 
Okay, so you heard what the click style torque wrench sounds like. Now let's go on to the digital. So I have my 12 point, or my 12 millimeter socket right here. We're gonna turn on the torque wrench. Okay, now you can see it said torque zero. It actually zeroes the torque every single time it is turned on. So, and I'm actually gonna go down to 20 foot pounds, very simple. We're gonna turn this thing, and let me just show you right here. You can see it's counting up and also right there. 20 foot pounds, very simple. I'm actually gonna loosen it again. Show you guys one more time because that did go pretty fast. So, you're torquing. You can see right here, 11, 12, 13, 14. You can see it is coming up the lights itself. Right there, it went vibrated, showed a green light, 20 foot pounds on the dot right there. Now let's say, okay, you gotta go to 20 foot pounds and then you gotta do uh, 20 degrees of angle. What you're gonna do, right hand corner, it's going to zero and it's going to set your angle. So you got to hold it. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. Right there. I'm going to drop it down. Let's do 35 degrees of angle. So, right there, zero degrees. Right there, 30 grad, 35 degrees of angle, and it took it to 23.4 foot-pounds. So that's also a really cool thing that you can see um, once you've done an angle. So let's say you're doing heads on a vehicle, and it says, you know, torque to 100 foot-pounds, and then it'll say torque it, or, or torque angle 90 degrees. It will show you how much it took to torque it once you've gotten there. And that's a cool thing to see because you can actually tell the difference in bolt stretch um, on each bolt on the head. So that's a very cool thing to see. Now I can't speak about what you should purchase because in the end the choice is completely up to you as well as what you think you will be doing most with the torque wrenches. Now with the click style torque wrench, it's gonna be much cheaper for you. It can get into tighter spots. It's thinner, um, but does have a smaller torque range. Can't do angle. Um, if you are going to need to see whether it's Newton pounds, inch pounds, whatever it is, you gotta look it up on your phone, use a calculator, that type of thing. But I would say if you're gonna be an at-home mechanic who is not really torquing things too often, but when you are gonna to torque something, it's gonna be something pretty simple. You don't need to use torque angle. You're not working on engines, internals. You're not working on internals of engines, building engines, building trans, doing things where you do need angle. I would say the click style is the way to go. So if you're someone who you don't think you're gonna be doing torque angle in the future, it's probably a good choice to go with a less expensive click style wrench. Now, to someone who uses torque wrenches on the daily. You're not someone who's using it on the weekends every once in a while to torque things down, to torque you know, the easy thing here, here, and here. To someone who really is working um, on the daily on vehicles, you're torquing things constantly, you're working on various vehicles, so you might be working on European, American, Japanese, and they go from Newton meters to foot pounds. You wanna be able just to quickly adjust it over if you're using the books or looking on all data. You're working with engine internals, let's say you, you know, you're doing head bolts, rod bolts, that type of thing where you do need to have an angle, I would say it is worth it to spend the extra $230 on a uh, digital torque wrench. So it really comes down to what you are using the torque wrench for, how often you're using it. Now the maintenance upkeep on both this wrench and that wrench are pretty similar. Um, I, I've had this torque wrench for two years. A good thing about it is, is when you turn it off, it automatically torques zeroes itself. So you don't gotta worry about accidentally leaving it on 75 foot pounds and leaving it for a month, coming back and realizing that your torque wrench is now out of range because you forgot to put it back. So, so it really comes down to what is best for you. And that's why I tried providing you guys with some specifications, pricings, how it gets used. You can see it in use. Um, I really love both torque wrenches. I obviously have both of them for a reason and I I'm glad that I have two because sometimes this torque wrench is just too long to get in certain spaces unless I have to make myself you know, use more work. So it's nice to have that click style. Sometimes I need to pull out the angle. This makes it super simple. Um, on the daily though, I'm probably gonna be pulling this out nine times out of 10 more than the click style, just because to me it's a little bit outdated and this has so many more options. 
So yeah, I hope this was able to give you some informative information on both these wrenches and can help you guys uh, with an informed decision on what you guys will be choosing in the future. If you have any questions at all, definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. At the end of this video, I'll have a few click titles to go on to watch a few of my other tool videos, maybe even a car video. Um, as always, please make sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I hope you guys have a great day.